Galesburg. It is just about 4 o'clock right now. We're going to be bringing you all things considered next. Normally, all afternoon edition is at 4 o'clock. It's taking the Labor Day holiday off. Support for Tri-State's Public Radio comes from the Macomb Area Convention and Visitors Bureau. Announcing events for the week include the Macomb Balloon Rally, Macomb Kite Festival, and Gazebo Art Festival. Dates and details available on the events calendar at makeitmacomb.com. Again, it's coming up on 4 o'clock. Quick look at the forecast. Sunny and breezy day, a high of 87 degrees. Could see some wind gusts as high as 30 miles an hour uh, this afternoon and this evening. Tomorrow, not quite so warm. Sunny, but a high of just 73 and 67 on Wednesday. majority of Republicans would support allowing uh, these young people to remain in the country. If President Trump repeals protections for young people brought to the U.S. illegally, would Congress step in for Monday, September 4th? It's all things considered. I'm Ari Shapiro. This hour, the latest on the immigration policy known as DACA. Also, we'll talk with a journalist who came back from covering Charleston with a story she never expected, a profile of the mass shooter, Dylan Roof. The moment that he said, you don't know me, you don't know what hatred is, I said, no, I'm going to find out who you are, and I'm going to know you because you are hatred. And the latest from the Texas recovery, from super fun sites to a makeshift animal shelter that popped up in the town of Beaumont. Alligators, we're chewing on cows, um, there's alligators everywhere, so, and there's snakes and stuff, so it's quite the adrenaline rush. Now the news. Live from NPR News in Washington, I'm Janine Hurst. The U.S. is pushing for further sanctions on North Korea following its latest nuclear test. And here's Windsor Johnston reports the U.N. Security Council held an emergency meeting after Pyongyang detonated what it called a hydrogen bomb. U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley says North Korean leader Kim Jong-un is, quote, begging for war and stopped short of calling for unilateral military action by Washington. He instead urged the council to exhaust all diplomatic means to end the ongoing crisis. A Denmark senior fellow at the Wilson Center says diplomacy will be challenging, but it's still the way to go. Neither side really can agree to what we're going to get to. The United States is insisting that the negotiation is focused on demilitarization, and North Korea absolutely refuses to talk about that. Switzerland has offered to help mediate any potential diplomatic talks. Windsor Johnston, NPR News, Washington. Meanwhile, President Trump spoke by phone with South Korea's President Moon Jae-in today. Both leaders agreed to increase pressure on North Korea and to strengthen joint military capabilities. Trump also gave in principle to the approval to lift restrictions on South Korea's missile payload capabilities. This container says the city is open for business. And here's Kerry Khan reports the mayor gave the upbeat assessment despite thousands of people still evacuated from flooded homes. Mayor Sylvester Turner says he's hoping the city will be back on track after the Labor Day holiday. Speaking on CBS, Turner urged anyone planning a conference, convention, or sporting event in the city to still come. He assured visitors that Houston can handle multiple events at once. Meanwhile, thousands of Houstonians remain evacuated from their homes, mainly in the western reaches of the city, where structures are still flooded due to water releases from full reservoirs. Sunday, officials carried out a controlled burn of unstable chemicals at the Arkema plant in nearby Crosby, hoping to reduce the chance of further explosions at the damaged facility. There's also concern about chemical contamination, as at least five Superfund waste sites in and around the region were flooded. Harry Khan, NPR News, Houston. As many holiday drivers found, gas prices rose thanks to Hurricane Harvey. Patrick DeHaan, a senior analyst at GasBuddy.com, says the national average has risen 30 cents since the storm hit more than a week ago to $2.64 a gallon. And he says the price hike will probably continue for a short time. We could see gas prices moving higher for a few more days, uh, but I think the national average will pop out somewhere in the mid-260s were very close to seeing the top. Gasoline futures slipped though and more refineries and oil platforms in the Gulf of Mexico shut down during the storm are coming back online. The government says now only 14 of the 30 platforms evacuated for the storm are still closed. This is NPR.